Hello everybody. This is Cynthia from Swan Soap and Such. I am presently making some pine tar with colloidal oatmeal soap that my family uses and absolutely loves because we have psoriasis and pine tar is something that is that really works. So I'm doing a hot process um, soap making today and I haven't done any videos before so I'm a little nervous so bear with me. Um, I've gathered all my, my supplies and, and ingredients. I have put my oils in the crock pot and they're hot. I've made my lye um, mixture and it is presently at 167 degrees and my oils are at 160 degrees. So I'm going to wait a couple minutes and have the lye um, calm down in its temperature. Um, so um, with working with lye, you, as you see, I have um, rubber gloves. I have, I'll see if I can get down far enough. Hi. I have my glasses and my eye protection. I have my apron on. I have long pants. And I have protection because lye is very caustic and we have to be very careful. I've made sure all animals and children are not in the area. And I have all my molds and all my um, ingredients and supplies together. Um, over here I have the um, the pine tar that's to go into um, the soap. I also have the oatmeal to go into the soap, which is colloidal oatmeal. It's still a little humid out, so I'll have to um, break that up when I stir it. Um, but the first thing I did was I weighed all my oils. And let me tell you the oils that I have in my soap. I have used soap calc. So I have a recipe here from Soap Calc that I've used before and really, really like it. I use olive oil because it's very moisturizing and you never can go wrong with olive oil. I use pig lard because it makes a very hard bar of soap which lasts a long time and then I don't have to add stearic acid which I'd rather not, but you can. You know, everyone does things differently. I might use it in the future. Who knows? But right now, the lard is working well to make it hot. I mean, hard. Um, I have coconut oil, which is also a hard oil, which um, provides the cleansing that we like in soap, of course, and castor oil, which produces a lot of the bubbles and grapeseed oil which has a, a lot of nutrients that are really great for your skin and of course shea butter which is you know something that moisturizes and penetrates through all the layers of the skin and then my additives of pine tar and oatmeal I'm not putting any scent or any other color in it because pine tar just pretty much makes it brown but it's so good a soap and so therapeutic that it's a really great bar of soap Okay, so now I've put all those oils in here. I weighed them by scale. So I, I weighed them um, by weight and not by volume. And then I um, mixed my distilled water and I poured my lye into the water. Here we go. I poured my lye into the water and not the other way around or you could get an explosion and we don't want any explosions. So you have to be very careful and know exactly what you're doing. This is not a beginner video, but I mention that because it's very important to know that. Okay, so I weighed my lye crystals in a separate container in stainless steel or in plastic. And then I put the distilled water, not tap water or spring water because they have impurities. So the distilled water is in a container and I pour the lye into my water. Okay, that's been done and the oils have melted and the temperatures are about the same. So I'd like to begin to make the soap. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take the stick blender here. I have a Bella stick blender, which is extremely powerful. And usually I have to use two hands to hold it. So I'm going to set that there. And then I have a, a little strainer. I'm going to strain my lye right into onto the stick blender so that there's no splashing and any of this little lye lint gets caught in the basket here so it doesn't go into the soap. So that's good. All right and now we can begin. I'm going to pull this a little bit closer to me. And yes, you can still see that. So we're going to mix it up. And you can see already the color change. And you can see already that the lye has already started saponifying the oils, which is what they call when the lye interacts with the oils and the fats and makes soap. So excuse the sound, but we need to stick blend now. stop, we'll stir. Let's just check the temperatures just for fun. I'm at 164, so we're doing good. We'll continue. And I'm going to warm it by because it splatters, so we'll do low, to low speed stick blend. And we'll keep stick blending until we get to be careful that your stick blender doesn't get too hot because it'll burn out. Uh, this one seems to be pretty heavy duty and the temperatures aren't that high so it should be good. yet. See, we have to be very careful. It's looking good. It's taking a little while to come to trace. It's almost there. Yeah, 
Oops, it's come to a light trace now. I don't know if you guys can see that light trace. The light's kind of bright. Maybe I can bring you in a little closer. Let's see. You can see that light trace. Sorry about the juggling around. There. You can see that light trace now. See how there's a... When I put the stick blender in and then I take it out and drip over, um, you can see where the lines are lining up in the soap batter. That's called trace. <laughs> just a little so we can see the whole thing here. Alright, there we go. Okay, let's see what the temperature's at now. Mm, 161, so it'll heat up once the crock pot heats up some more. <laughs> trace. I think you can see that where it's, you know, the lines are showing up. So we'll continue. I bounce my stick blender so that the bubbles come out. We don't want any added bubbles in our soap batter if possible. Okay, we'll continue. <laughs> This is coming to more of a pudding-like consistency, and we continue. <laughs>
give it a little rest for a few minutes is probably uh, enough and it'll go into uh, where it's going to go to gel phase and then we'll be able to stick blend it again but I think for now we'll just stir it a little and see how it goes we really want to get it to a thicker trace so I'll clean this out clean my edges all around we don't want any of the soap to be on the edge because it dries on the edge and it makes these little white flakes in your soap and we prefer not to have those so put my stick blender down here get my this is a stainless steel um, whisk so it's okay in the soap and lye mixture but aluminum is never good it always reacts and will just destroy your batter so always use plastic or stainless steel and I have um, the plastic one here too it tends to be a little bit more flimp floppy so I use this one so you can see our mixture has gotten pretty thick and so we'll uh, stir it up a little I like to make it come to a medium or thick tray so I'm just giving my stick blender a little rest because it was getting a little warm so let's see what this temperature is at now okay we're at 166 so we're doing good this is looking great okay normally um, I'm just gonna scrape my sides down um, I wrote a little uh, blurb so I wouldn't forget things to tell you so once I combine this all the oils and the lye and the water mixture in the soap and it comes to trace um, this is where cold and hot process diverge cold process you would go to a light trace to make any additives and colorants etc um, but with hot process we continue to cook it and stir it until the soap is actually made and the lye is done doing its thing so never leave hot process soap it could boil over as the reaction of saponification happens you want to be here so that you won't have this big mess all over your place and it even if you put the lid on it it will still um, volcano all over as they call it so we'll, we're gonna put the lid on now I'm gonna turn it up to high and I'm going to um, let this cook for a while um, and so I'm new at my uh, filming um, hopefully tomorrow my friend will come over and help me to be able to get this on and post this or download it so you all can see it but in the meantime I'm going to explain some things um, um, so what we have here is the the thick trace and then once it um, starts cooking and around the edges you'll see where it's um, gelling and you'll see a different color come up over the edge and in hot process you can stir it stick blend it through this whole process or you can wait and let it cook and boil over if you will just onto itself to go to the to the applesauce stage to the mashed potato phase and then finally where it turns into soap and we call it the Vaseline stage because it looks like Vaseline and after that happens then we add our additives and so while we're waiting for this soap I'm going to move it back just a little bit I'm going to take my pine tar and my oatmeal and I am going to mix them together now I need to break up all of these colloidal oatmeal and, uh, I guess I'm going to have to do it in here 
they seem to be wanting to stick around so we'll just put in a little at a time and mix it up so that it gets all incorporated I found that when I uh, mix the oatmeal with the liquid that it mixes into the soap batter much better than alone I get little pockets where it doesn't mix in where there's little um, uh, little balls of oatmeal which is not terrible but if I can avoid that I'm going to try to do that so just a little at a time and I mix and mix and I mix and mix because we want this fully incorporated I don't want any um, little pockets of oatmeal showing so I'm using um, eight ounces of pine tar and one cup of colloidal oatmeal. Okay, and the colloidal oatmeal is organic, and the pine tar is pine tar. I'm using Bickford's pine tar. I know some other people use that and my dad uses this soap. He's 87 now and he was getting some psoriasis breaking out on his face and uh, he used this soap. He was very, at first he didn't really want to use any soaps that he wasn't using. He was very against it but then when he tried it and he saw that it cleared up his psoriasis he was like Oh, that's good. And he liked it that it was hard. He just said, oh, I wish it smelled better. <laughs> and I said, Dad, it is what it is. It's therapeutic. It's not for smelling. It works really great. So I think it's pretty much incorporated here. Let me get a little spatula and clean off my my little whisk here. I want to get as much of this back in as I can and not have it on my whisk. So we'll just keep scraping and scraping. Okay, and then we'll clean this up later. And we'll get this all to come down. And Okay, well, that looks really good. I like that. It looks really good. Alright, there we go. Now that's ready for when the soap is ready. Now, I'm going to bring the soap back because I want you guys to see. Let's see if you can see this. Where's the. Alright, yeah. You can see right over in this corner right here, the soap is bubbling up you can see it just barely <laughs> I'll take the lid off you can see it right there it's bubbling and bubbling so that'll happen and it'll fold over and then after it does that then we'll mix it up so for right now we just have to to wait and I'm going to stay here and uh, be near the soaps um, let's see. So we went over the additives and the pine tar. <clears throat> yep, it's boiling over here, it's boiling over there. So we're getting it started. This crock pot holds seven quarts and this recipe has um, 84 ounces in it including the pine tar so it's quite a big batch for a small batch but it works well in this crock pot, which I really like. And I've been able to find crock pots 
at the second hand store which I'm really excited about because then I can make more than one at a time so that's really great so I'll put my notes down and we'll wait for this to cook we'll try to speed this up Ooh, it's getting warm in here, and I have a fan down here. I'm going to turn it on. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. So it's coming along. It's cooking and cooking. I guess you could call this the low temperature hot process. Other people make the high temperature hot process and allow it to volcano, which is part of the saponification process that it automatically does. And I find that a little bit stressful because it happens so quickly. I had one soap batch that volcanoed like over and over and over and over. And so that was okay, and I was there, and I used my whisk and whisked it all down, and that was okay. But this is a little more relaxing for me, and so I choose to do it this way. Everybody's different. Everybody does things in a little bit different way. The only thing that's critical is to get your ingredients measured accurately, your lye and your water measured accurately. And so I use soapcalc.net. And they also have one on Brambleberry. I checked out both of them, and they're both great. Um, there's a little bit of difference um, with the two, but I like soap calc, and I've used that before I found Brambleberry, so I just continue to use that and have had great success. So you can see we're getting more um, soap coming in, and then it'll do a fold thing, and then we'll stir it up again. So that shouldn't take too long. I wanted to keep this video going even though this is, you know, a long and boring process as we're just watching this cook so that you can get an idea of the time that it takes for it to cook. Um, and here we are. So when the lye is still active here, um, so we still have our gloves and all our protective gear and my glasses. I have my glasses on, so plus I have these covered, plus I have longer sleeves. I know there's a little gap, but not too much. So we're good. So this keeps cooking and cooking and we're in good shape. Sorry about the shadow from the, but my lighting is what it is. My little lamp here that has sunlight light, which I like. So now, I don't know, can you see that coming out of there? Let's see, move it back just a little. Okay, over here, it's coming out this way, it's coming out this way, it's coming out all over. So the whole thing's starting to come together. So that didn't take very long. So I'll be ready with my whisk in case it wants to boil over. I do have it at high because I want you not to be here all day doing this. So I can show you the whole process and what I do. Hmm. 
I don't know if you can tell here over in this area over here there's a little oil separation which is can happen which is not a problem it also is in here you can see the liquid oils separated but when we stick blend that it'll go right together so so here we have like the applesauce stage coming out and we still have you can see it better over here we still have the um, the batter that needs to be turned into this, and I think that we'll just go ahead and get that uh, stick blender going and merge all those oils together. I'm going to turn this down to low so it doesn't go crazy on me. But you can see we're at an applesauce stage here, and I still have some solids in here that have it turned into the applesauce stage but after we stick blend them they will be in the applesauce stage go ahead and do that i just want to be careful not to spray this because it's still active lye in this mixture so we want to be careful but we still want to mix up all our Just mix it back in. I think I'm going to try this stronger stick blend speed. Okay, so that's pretty much mashed potatoes there. We went from applesauce to mashed potatoes. I guess we're going to go through all the stages. That's wonderful. You get to see all of that. Oops. That was my spoon. I knocked it off. Let me get those down. All right. And then we'll continue because it's still separating and we want to make sure it goes together. Now it's getting a little warm. I think I'll take it out of the pot. I'll move this back for a minute. Get you right here. Another set of these. And Take this out of the pot. I don't think we'll really need any more heat. I could turn this off. But I think that we're really this this will keep it very hot also. So the next stage, oops, is gonna be the Vaseline stage. So it's starting to volcano up, as you can see. So my idea of going to a slow temperature hot process is now not happening. It's going to a hot, hot process. Instead of a low temperature, we're at a high temperature. What is this temperature? Okay, yeah, we're at 208 now, no wonder. <laughs> so with soap making, Things can change and you have to be ready to just adapt with the change. So that's okay. We can do that. Turns into soap, everybody's happy, especially me. So we're starting to get some mashed potato Vaseline mixture here. 
so that's good. I think that other mixture I had was still applesauce, and now we're at mashed potato. Okay, that's better. Yes, I think that's right. Every recipe is a little bit different. I have to get all the soap down so I don't have any of that come up. Okay, we just and it will turn into soap. Yes, my turning it onto high made it go into hot process. If I kept it at low, it would have been different. So it's starting to be Vaseline. I'm still got a very fluid mixture here. So that's nice. I am going to add some yogurt and some sodium lactate. So I think I'll get the sodium lactate. And I didn't get that out yet. So I want to put two ounces in. You should have all your ingredients together, sodium lactate, and just Okay, I'm not putting sodium lactate in. That sort of helps it stay fluid, so I was going to use it, but I'm not going to because I'm not, there it is, I'm not 100% organized and I need to have labels on everything. So here it goes. It's finally going into, um, the stage. You know, we've been going 37 minutes now and I've got pretty much uh, Vaseline mashed potato. And it's getting Vaseline-y more and more as the moments progress. So let's we'll have soap in a few minutes. We'll get our additives in and mold it and we'll be good. All right. I think I'm going to be done with this because we don't want to stick blend it anymore. It's almost very much so. I will be stick blending the uh, pine tar in. I've seen other people do this and they're a lot neater than I am. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a messy one. But we just do the best we can. The idea is just like Valerie Mosier of Shell Brook uh, handcrafted soaps in Mosier River, Nova Scotia says, which I love that lady. She uh, says your soap, your base soap is the most important. Whether it looks pretty or not is not important, only that it's very good for your skin. And that's what we want. We want soap that's really great for your skin and helps you. We want to help people. See, now you can see this is starting to be Vaseline-y. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's just, it's getting there. There we go. Now it's finally, all of it's finally turning to this Vaseline stage and why it's so fluid is probably because it's so hot. So let's see. Yeah, it's come down a little bit, 194. So we'll let it come down in temperature a little bit and then we'll add the, uh, the yogurt which will help to keep it some more fluid, so then we'll add also the pine tar and the oatmeal here. And then we'll put it in molds. Alright. So, let me move these other things out of the way so we can get the molds in here. A little mess here. Pick up. 
And before I began, I sprayed everything with alcohol, 90%, and so everything was cleaned up. Um, so, it's all sanitary. I even did my lamp, I did everything. So, it's all clean. And, let's see, I don't want to burn the yogurt, so we can see where we're at. You know, we're still a little warm. I'm going to let that cool down a little bit. And then we'll uh, put our additives in. Stirring it helps get cooler. And so we want to stir it and get it cooler. Alright, there we go. Another lady I really like to watch on YouTube is uh, Kimberly McNutt at Essential Soap. She has been an inspiration to me. She shows everything, how it's done, how she does it, what she uses. And this was very helpful to a new soaper to have that kind of access to that information. So, I, um, I really like that. I'd like to do the same thing. Although I'm not as experienced, I'm fairly new at this, but I sure enjoy it. I especially like making soaps that are helpful to people. I like the natural ingredients, and I do like the micas. I have to tell you, I think the soaps um, that are pretty, <laughs> I think that they're great. So I don't want to not use them. Um, so I make sure that I get the micas that are um, um, safe to use in, um, in, we're at 192, safe to use in, on your lips and everything so that it, nothing can um, harm you. I have lot numbers. I'm using Soap Maker 3 so I know what additives are in what soaps and where I got them and how much everything costs. So that's real important. And since I'm a, a bookkeeper by trade, um, this has been <laughs> not as hard as it would be for other people. Um, and I love making things. Now, I used to be a knitter. I knit, I crochet, I did needlepoint, I did cross stitch, I did all that stuff. And I like scrapbooking a little bit too, although it's not my specialty. But soap making, now that's something I can sink my teeth into because the assortment of, of different additives and colors and therapeutic additives you can use are almost endless. Um, I was just discussing on the hot process soap making um, Facebook website that I wanted to try some different spices and the people were very good and they were telling me how certain ones you shouldn't be using and certain ones you could use and that was really helpful because I was asking about that we should always be um, getting um, help from those who have more experience than ourselves so that we don't make any mistakes because the more, most important thing is to get a soap that is um, really great for people's skin. And I've had people I know and people I don't know use my soaps and they all say that they're very moisturizing and they don't have to use the moisturizers anymore when they're just using the soap. So. I explained to them that when soap makers are, and manufacturers are making soap, um, they, many of them, not all of them, many of them take the glycerin from the soap, which is a natural byproduct of the soap, and they um, sell off the glycerin, and then they um, um, sell the soap, and it's virtually a laundry or detergent bar that they're selling for you to use on your skin and no wonder we're getting dry skin. I've, I've had dry skin, dry skin. Now my skin is normal because I'm using my own soaps. So I'm real happy about that. 
Okay, let's see where we are at now. Let's see. Okay, it's coming. It's 186. So it's coming down. And I can feel the moisture coming off this batter into my face. It's making me all wet. I'm going to get something to wipe my face right here. Now, since this is soap, I can take my gloves off because they're hot. And the lye is no longer active in the soap. And I can take my protective eye gear off because I already have glasses on as well. And any of this soap that you see that's drying along the edge here, you don't want it in your soap. It makes white little specks in there and you don't want that. All right. Now, let's just, now my yogurt is Greek yogurt. I've um, had it sitting out so it's at room temperature. So I'm going to add it in. And I'm going to have to use this because I can't get it all. This is two tablespoons. So I'm using just a small amount in my batch. Now we want all the goodness, like they say, in our soap. Absolutely. Now we'll mix this really well because we don't want the yogurt to be cooking. So, but it'll help make this a little more fluid. And it's just, see that? One of them dropped in there. Hey you, get out of there. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to mix it really well. So I have a wrist that's not in 100% that I need to help it. So here we go. And you can see this is pretty fluid. And I haven't added only the yogurt now. But once the temperature goes down, you will find that it will be a lot more firm than it is right now. So while it's still fluid, and I, I'm not putting any essential oils in, so I don't have to worry about um, the temperature um, of the soap and making my additives, so I'm going to go ahead and just put this all in there and mix it really good. The more you mix it, the better. And so I'm hoping this fluidity is going to help me because it's a lot of stuff to put in here. Of course now I do have soap and the pine tar and the oatmeal are going in and they are going to keep their therapeutic values. So we'll have the pine tar, which is really, my dad says it's the only thing that helps him with his psoriasis. And, um, of course, my kids have psoriasis because my husband has it. It's in my family. I've had it. Right now, everything's all calm. But, you know, I certainly would use this soap. And the oatmeal, of course, you know, when you get psoriasis, your skin gets irritated and gets red and so it's important now I'm just going to fold this in because I don't want to splatter anything so <clears throat> here we go mix 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 it's coming along Smells like pine tar. I'm not adding any essential oils. You could add tea tree. Tea tree would be really good, but with this soap, and the, with the oatmeal in it, and the pine tar, I think that it does a really good job of 
doing what it does. And I like it the way it is, so we're going to keep the same recipe for now. We may try something new later, but for now we want this to be the one we like. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure I get down all the edges, all the corners. Make sure everything gets mixed in completely. See, now our temperature should be quite a bit lower now. Ooh, not too bad. 173. We don't need to worry about the temperature, but it's always fun to know. There's those white things that are trying to get in. It stay out. Now the soap is hot, but it's not too hot. <clears throat> so this looks like I'm about ready to mold it. Just want to make sure I'm going to spray it with a little alcohol because it's starting to make a skin and I don't like it when it does that. So we're going to put it up here. I'll get my molds. Here. Okay, I don't know how much I'll need, but let's see how it goes. Grab my spoon. Get this stuff off of here. And this part, let's just clean it up. Okay. So we're at 51 minutes and we have pretty much the completed product, so that's pretty quick. So we'll just start loading it into the molds. Make sure it gets into all the corners. I'm going to bang this down. And then we're going to get some more in here. We'll do one at a time. Good. And then that'll be good. Now, some people, they like to um, put their... Um, I can't see so good. I'll bring it over. Um, put their um, soap in the freezer or the refrigerator. Hot, hot process. Maybe even cold process. I don't know. I'm doing hot process, so that's where my more of my expertise, if you want to call it that, is. Okay, so I pretty much level that out. Take one of these spatulas and clean up the edges. Because we pretty much want a a um, just a flat top because. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to take these edges off. Alright. That's good. And bang that one down again. Line the bubbles. Okay. Put that over there. Then we can do another one. for chocolate pudding. Yum. Okay, let me bang this down. And then we we'll continue. Get over there. Might be able to make some samples too. in the corners. Come on now, get in there. Get in the corners. Get that alcohol, start to get a skin. It just helps keep things fluid while they are messing around. Alright. This is a little 
little more in it than usual. Maybe I'll just scoop a little out there. Alright, that looks pretty good. 